The plates. Say where you are. Hi. Show me Say where you are. Show you shines. Okay. Is there anything in the pop-up we should know about? Yes, there where? is. Can I take you to it? No, you can tell me. Uh, can we go in there for a second, just so I can tell you something? I've slipped pile of those into his drink. Um, and my mother upstairs in the cupboard next to the sink. Wardrobe. So, okay. Wardrobe. It's a double wardrobe. Cheer up, at least you caught the bad guy. Hey everyone, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. So the case we are covering today, especially if you are from the UK, I am pretty sure that you have heard about this case because it has been on the news everywhere recently. I have also gotten a lot of requests to cover this case. So today we are covering the case of Virginia McCulloch. And back in 2019, Virginia was living with her parents, her mom and dad. And her mom and dad, they were in their 70s. They were elderly. They needed a little bit more care. And Virginia was supposed to be caring for them. She was living with them. She was supposed to be a caring daughter. But that was the exact opposite of what Virginia was. She was a compulsive liar. She stole money from her parents behind their back. She completely bled them dry. She got them into a lot of debt. So she decided that the only answer to her problems was to murder her parents. She then hid their bodies in makeshift tombs in the home where she then lived beside the bodies of her parents for the next four years. She slept in the same house. She ate in the same house. She watched TV in the same house. She just carried on living her normal life whilst also pretending to be her parents at the same time. She made fake doctor's appointments pretending to be her parents. She ordered new credit cards pretending to be her parents. She even called the police pretending to be her parents. But that is not the craziest thing. Oh no, no, because Virginia had four sisters. There are four other siblings whose parents have been murdered. So how in the world did Virginia McCulloch get away with these murders for four years? Well, that is what we are going to be talking about today. So let's jump into the case of Virginia McCulloch. And I just want to give a huge thank you to today's sponsor, and that is Midas Merch. And you guys remember me talking about this game a couple of months ago because it is absolutely incredible. You play in this fantasy land filled with all of these cute, adorable little creatures, and you have to team up with them to fight the darkness and restore order to the realm. The game was created by the same designers as The Sims 3 and 4, which tells you a lot. The detail in this game is amazing. But my favorite part about the whole game is nurturing and discovering all of the tiny cute little creatures. There are over 200 to collect. You care for them, you feed them, you evolve them by merging them together. And my favorite creatures by far are my adorable crystal fawns. I mean, look how cute they are. I'm sorry, but that is adorable. And I have some exciting news because right now Midas Merch have their very own special Halloween event taking place. Because this October, a spooky new realm called the Haunted Garden has opened up, filled with enchanting creatures and mysterious serious treasures. And as you journey through the haunted garden, you'll uncover rare spooky items, face the jack-o'-lantern plants, free the trapped souls, and merge eerie tombstones. And best of all, you will unlock the cutest and scariest adorable little Halloween creatures to bring back to your island, such as the spirit turtle, the spellbound fox, and my personal favorite, the black cat. I mean, look at how adorable and spooky he is at the same time. And spooky season really is the best season to start playing. So if you wanted to check out Midas Merge, you can download the game for free by using the link in my description box. And using that link rather than going to the app store really does help out this channel. And then all you need to do is play to level 10 to unlock the special event. And the first 100 of you to use my link, download the game and reach level 10 will receive an exclusive spirit turtle Halloween creature. How exciting is that? So thank you again to Midas Merge for sponsoring today's video, but thank Thank you to every single one of you watching right now because truly without all of you guys I wouldn't get opportunities like this and now let's jump into today's case. Virginia McCulloch was born in 1988, an exact date of birth is not known, and she grew up in the village of Great Bajo, Essex, which is just outside of London. And as a child, Virginia grew up with her parents, John and Lois. Her dad, John, was a university lecturer and also a published author who worked at the Anglia Ruskin University in Cambridge. And then her mom, Lois, was a stay-at-home mom. And what is just so surprising about this case, and I obviously mentioned this in the intro, is the fact that Virginia had siblings. This case would almost make more sense 
if she was an only child. But she wasn't. She had four other siblings. She had four sisters and Virginia is the youngest out of all of the five children. Now we know nothing about the siblings in today's case. We don't even know their names. Their identities have been kept anonymous. And we don't really know too much about the upbringing of Virginia or her siblings. What we do know is that Virginia apparently grew up in a very strict household. Lois and John were born in the 1940s and it is said that they are quote old-fashioned in their parenting. Apparently this meant quote they followed the virtues of discipline in the way that many of their generation did. And those are not my words. I am just quoting things that I have found in my research. I am in no way saying that everyone born in the 1940s would parent this way. However, it says that Virginia's parents, they weren't very good at showing emotion. They struggled to act in a caring way towards their children. They were described as, quote, functional, not affectionate parents. John and Lois also didn't show much affection towards each other either. They slept in separate bedrooms and they slept in separate bedrooms for as long as the children could remember. The children also had to follow a lot of rules in the household. Lois, the mother, has been described by her children as suffering symptoms of OCD, which manifested into her scrubbing, cleaning, disinfecting everything. She had a fear of microscopic germs and she was just incredibly strict about everything in the house especially like when it came to like the bathroom like what the children touched in the bathroom and things like that she was particularly very strict about the laundry and how it was sorted Lois also suffered from severe anxiety and she was on medication for this Lois also suffered from agoraphobia which to put it briefly agoraphobia can obviously be different things for different people but for Lois it was about um, being in social situations and her feeling trapped and her feeling like she couldn't escape. So Lois tended to avoid social situations. She didn't really like being in crowds or just in new places. And if Lois was ever spotted on the street by neighbors, she was always keeping her head down. Her eyes were always on the floor. She avoided contact with people. She didn't really feel comfortable with having small talk or conversations with people. Now, John, the dad, has been said to have been on the autistic spectrum and he has been described as quote very much a man of routine. John as well as Lois they have both been described as quiet as shy. They were introverted they didn't really mix with other people they did keep their children quite isolated as well. John would also avoid contact with people. Now obviously Lois has that phobia. I don't think John has a phobia of like social interactions but John just seemed to be always in a hurry. He was never one to hang around outside of his house. If he had to leave his house, he was definitely walking very fast or getting in the car very fast. He was always rushing around looking busy. He was never one to stop and talk to anyone. And it's also said that one other thing that John and Lois would use in the household was physical punishments towards the children. The children were smacked if they didn't follow rules. One of the children did use to wet the bed quite frequently and they were punished for this. And I don't quite know the details of that situation. All I know is that social services had to get involved for a certain period of time. Neighbors would quite often hear screaming coming from the house as well. And the screaming was more than likely coming from Lois, the mom. And according to Virginia, and Virginia, everything that she says you have to take with a pinch of salt. But according to Virginia, her mom Lois was a very angry and violent person. And apparently Lois was also what Virginia has described as a happiness Hoover. So someone that would just suck all the happiness and all the light out of a room, out of a situation, out of a person. Virginia has also accused her mom of being emotionally neglectful when she was a child. She has also said that her parents were never there to support her and that her parents overall were unkind people and not the easiest people to live with. Virginia has also accused her mom of abusing her, saying, quote, smacking her whilst she bathed, which 
apparently happened up until she was 13 years old. But just to counter Virginia's claims, because you do have to take everything that Virginia says with a pinch of salt, all of the other siblings, so the other four siblings, have all come out and denied these abuse allegations. They have actually said that these accusations are, quote, lies and a disgusting misrepresentation of our family. So take of that what you will. We have one sibling accusing the two parents of being neglectful, of being abusive, of being angry, violent, not easy to live with. And then we have the other four siblings that are saying the opposite. And I think the main thing to remember here is that all siblings have a different relationship with their parents. But we also have to remember that we don't always know what happens behind closed doors. So now we move on to Virginia in her adult life. All of the other siblings, the other four siblings, they have moved out of the house. And Virginia is the only one left in the household. And it's not exactly clear if Virginia ever moved out of the house or did she just permanently live with her parents up until her 30s? However, what we do know is that Virginia, throughout her 20s, she rarely had a job. She spent a short period of time working as a barmaid and we don't know about anything else. She rarely socialized with other people. She didn't have any friends. She didn't have any hobbies. She just kind of kept to herself. It also seems like she didn't have a very close relationship with her sisters either. She rarely spent any time with her sisters. And her sisters have described Virginia as incredibly socially awkward and a compulsive liar. So there's definitely some tension there between Virginia and her other siblings. There's definitely not the best relationship there. So we, now we get to 2018. Virginia is now in her 30s. She is currently unemployed. And at this point, we definitely know that she is living with her parents. Her parents currently live in a house on Pump Hill Road in Great Baddo. It was a three-story end of terrace home. It is in quite a built-up area. There is lots of neighbors around. And obviously there's a neighbor. She sharing an adjoining wall. Her parents, John and Lois, they have now entered their 70s. They are elderly. They are slowing down a little bit. They need like a little bit more care. They both have ongoing health issues. Her dad, John, suffers from type 2 diabetes. He has high blood pressure, high cholesterol. He's on various different medications for his various different health conditions. And Lois, her anxiety in her older age has just gotten worse. She's still on medication for that. And Virginia is obviously living with her parents. She claims that she's there to keep an eye on them, support them, care for them. But is that what Virginia is doing? Is Virginia that caring? Oh no, 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 no. Virginia was just living with her parents to take advantage of them. Because first of all, we know that Virginia is currently unemployed. However, she's lying to her parents about that. She is telling her parents that she has a job. She would make up one story after another about this job or this job. She would make up about the fact that she had been fired unfairly from this job and she was currently looking for another job and then she would get another job. It was all a bunch of lies. She would even pretend to go to an office every single day. She would go to extreme lengths to lie about her employment status. There was one job where she pretended to be a web designer on a very good salary. The next thing you know, Virginia is an artist. And apparently she was attending a really fancy art school. And she would create drawings of houses and horses and landscapes. However, when people saw her drawings, her artwork, people, they didn't have the nicest things to say about her art. They just said that it was ordinary like borderline not good. And she was telling everyone that she was going to become a very famous artist, that her work would be displayed in galleries and people wanted to purchase her work and blah, blah, blah. She was on the brink of a breakthrough that would bring in a lot of money. But instead, what Virginia was currently doing is that she started to steal money from her parents without them knowing. Virginia soon managed to convince her parents that she should be the one to look after their finances. She convinced them that it was in their best interest for Virginia to look after their finances because they're elderly now. They're in their 70s. They don't understand the modern world. These are all the things that Virginia would say to her parents. She would say, mom, dad, you don't understand online banking, for example. I will take care of everything. And Lois and John thought that they could trust their daughter. But Virginia used this to her advantage. She was the one that her parents should have been concerned about because they agreed. They agreed for Virginia to look after their finances. Virginia gained total control over their bank accounts, their credit cards, any kind of loans or rentals that they had. And this is how Virginia started stealing money from her parents 
over and over again. And this is how she was able to get away with it. Virginia would transfer money from her parents' bank account into her own. She would also make various purchases on their credit cards. She definitely had a spending addiction. It was almost like a snowball effect. As soon as she started stealing the money and as soon as she started making purchases on her parents' credit cards, it was almost like she could not stop. She was buying everything and anything. So you might be thinking, Virginia now has control over her parents' finances. She's managed to manipulate them. But what about the other siblings? Were they not there to notice Virginia doing this? Were they not there to step in, possibly stop this from happening? And the truth is, we don't know. We don't know pretty much anything that went on in this family. The family have been described as not a conventional family. It seems like the other four siblings didn't really visit their parents very often. They didn't seem to have a very close relationship as a family. However, John and Lois did have grandchildren from the other four siblings, and it is said that they loved to see their grandchildren. So there clearly is a relationship there, but we just don't know. But it seems like the other siblings, they did didn't have much to do with their parents and they didn't have much to do with Virginia, which meant that Virginia basically had free reign and she could do whatever she wanted. And now that she had full control over her parents' finances, things just continue on to get worse and worse. Because as well as stealing money from her parents, this is when Virginia also started to make up a load of health problems. She said that she suffered from various very complex medical issues, such as thunderclap headaches. She lied about benign cysts that needed treatment. Virginia also lied about being pregnant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she faked a whole pregnancy. She bought a fake belly bump and everything. She convinced her parents that she was pregnant when she wasn't, and then, she faked a miscarriage. Yeah, that is the kind of person we are talking about today, someone that fakes a miscarriage. And why did Virginia do all of this? Why did she fake all of these health problems and the pregnancies and everything? Again, we can only speculate because we don't know the exact answers, but we can assume it was for attention. It was just another manipulation tactic. And because of all of these fake health issues and just the various things that Virginia was lying about, the fraud now went into overdrive. Virginia was now racking up tens of thousands of pounds worth of debt in her parents' names. And her parents, they still had no idea about any of this debt. Virginia also spent a lot of her time online gambling. She would lose thousands of pounds in one go and she would not care. She was also taking out so many loans in her parents' names. And eventually her parents got wind of what was going on. They got wind of the fact that money was going missing from their accounts, that they seem to be in a lot of debt, that they had a lot of loans being taken out. So you would think at this point, well, Virginia's being caught. Case over. But that is not what happened because Virginia managed to lie her way out of this. Even though her parents have basically caught her red-handed, they figure out that something fishy is going on with their finances. They obviously confront Virginia about this, but Virginia just made up more lies to cover up her lies. Virginia said that their worst fear of hackers and scammers, that had all come true. That Virginia's parents, John and Lois, were the victims of online banking hackers, scammers, fraud schemes. Virginia made up lie after lie to explain away why they had lost so much money. There was one lie she said that the bank had somehow lost all of their money. And as compensation, John and Lois would soon come into 160,000 pounds, which obviously was all a load of lies coming from Virginia. And these lies, it was very complex. This manipulation went on for months and months. Virginia went so far to create her lies to make them seem legitimate. She created fake documents pretending to be the police looking into the fraud schemes. She also contacted her parents pretending to be a police officer. And this fake police officer would apologize for all of the delays in the investigation. And it is just astounding how far Virginia went in her lies and her manipulation. And it seems like both John and Lois truly did believe all of these lies. Her mom, Lois, had a pen pal that she had had for years. And in these letters that Lois would write to her pen pal, Lois talked about all of the fraud schemes that she had fallen victim to. So we now get to March of 20. 
2019, Virginia has now been scamming her parents out of money for months and months. But at this point in March of 2019, Virginia has managed to scam out of her parents £60,000. And it was starting to get out of control. Virginia didn't know what to do. But the thing is, she just could not stop stealing money from her parents. Like that wasn't an option for her. Oh no, no, no. Virginia knew that it was only a matter of time until her parents actually figured out what was going on. There was only so long she could keep them hanging that the police were investigating and the compensation payments were going to start start coming in. It was only a matter of time until her parents figured out that it was Virginia behind all of this and then Virginia wouldn't be able to explain away her actions. So what did Virginia do? This is when she started to contemplate the unthinkable. She started to consider murdering her own parents. It really did come out of nowhere. She all of a sudden just started to think that there was no other way she could get out of all of this. In her mind, she felt trapped by her parents, caged in, closed off, drowning in her guilt and her dishonesty. According to her, she had no peace of mind or tranquility and she wanted to be free of all of this. She wanted her life back. And in her twisted logic, the perfect resolution to all of her problems was to murder her parents. Because if she murdered her parents, they would no longer be around. They wouldn't find out about the financial crimes. But then there was also another benefit of murdering her parents, because then she could continue to steal money from them. So over the next three months, Virginia could not get murder off of her mind. She kept thinking over and over again, should she do it? Should she murder her parents? Could she get away with it? And between March of 2019, and June 2019, Virginia started to take deliberate steps in planning the murders of her parents. She started to stockpile a load of prescription drugs. Prescription drugs that her parents needed to take. She bought a very sharp knife and obviously she clearly knew what she wanted to do with that. She bought the equipment that she would need to crush up the medication to spike her parents' food and drinks. And then in order to test out her plan, test out the waters to see if it would work, Virginia started to slowly drug her parents through their food or through their drink. She started to give them little doses of prescription medication just to see what side effects they had, how much of the prescription medication would be lethal. She essentially used her parents as guinea pigs. She just tested out different medications and different dosages on them, which is just sick that she was doing that. And Lois and John, they must have been suffering some pretty awful side effects from the drugs that they were taking. And in the end, after plotting planning, preparing, and testing out the prescription medication on her parents, Virginia was finally ready to go through with it, to murder her parents in cold blood. And now we get to the tragic events of today's case. Because on the 17th of June, 2019, late at night, just before her parents went to bed, Virginia took her stockpile of prescription drugs, crushed them all up, and put them into her parents' drinks. She first prepared her dad an alcoholic drink, which was a Guinness, which he had every single night before he went to bed. Her mom, Lois, didn't drink alcohol, so she prepared her mom a soft drink. She crushed up a load of prescription drugs, not as many, and she put them all in her mom's soft drink. Now, as her parents were relaxing for the evening, Virginia just calmly handed her parents the two drinks and she just sat there and watched them. She encouraged them to drink these drinks. Now, her dad drank his Guinness, no problem. Didn't need encouragement. He drank it very quickly. He drank the whole thing. However, her mom, she drank a little bit of her drink, but she didn't drink it all. Virginia was trying to encourage her mom to drink more and more, but she was struggling to get her mom to drink any more of that drink. So, so Virginia kind of just gave up and she soon helped both of her parents to their beds. Now remember Virginia's parents, they sleep separately. So she took her dad to his bedroom, took her mom to her bedroom, turned off the lights and both of her parents went to sleep. Now the next day on the 18th of June, Virginia got up, she calmly got out of bed and she went to check on her dad first. She found him still lying in bed and she went over to check if he was still breathing. And very sadly, he wasn't. Virginia's plan had worked. He never even made it through the night. So tragically, 70-year-old John McCulloch has lost 
his life. However, things weren't over for Virginia because Virginia now goes to check on her mom. Now remember, her mom didn't finish her drink. So she didn't have as much of the prescription drugs in her system. So when Virginia went to check on her mom, Lois was still alive. However, she seemed completely out of it. She was clearly suffering the side effects from the drugs. She was very drowsy. She was very confused. And Virginia, she kind of went into a panic. She didn't know what to do because that was her plan. She wanted to kill her parents using the prescription drugs. However, Virginia did have a backup plan. If you remember, in those months that she was preparing the murders, she went out and purchased a large, sharp knife, knowing that she may need a plan B. And this was her plan B. So after finding her mom awake, Virginia decides to turn on the radio for her mom. And apparently Virginia did this so her mom would be calm and happy in her last moments. Let that sink in. This is so chilling. Who thinks like that? So Virginia returns to her mom's room with a hammer, not a knife, not yet, a hammer. However, when Virginia entered her mom's bedroom, her mom was just lying on the bed, listening to the radio. And Virginia just thought that her mom looked so innocent in that moment. She just couldn't go through with the murder. She just kept pacing back and forth, contemplating what to do. She was basically having an argument with herself in her head, basically debating, should she kill her mom? And I really wish I could tell you that that is where this case ends. We have obviously already had one murder, but I wish that it ended there. But sadly, it does not. Because after Virginia had spent a decent amount of time debating what was the right thing to do, Virginia finally approached her mom on the bed with the hammer in her hand and smashed her mom across the head with it. Now, Virginia again assumed that this one blow with the hammer would be enough to kill her mom in just that single blow, but it didn't. Instead, Lois turned over on the bed and looked her daughter straight in the eye and said the words, what are you doing? What are you doing? So even though Lois is spaced out, she's confused, she's kind of out of it with the side effects of the drugs, she's still clearly with it enough to realize that her daughter is attacking her. And her mom must have been confused, definitely, but just terrified of her own daughter standing over her with a hammer. And Virginia just stared at her mom. They locked eyes for a good 30 seconds, just staring at one another, not saying anything. And again, that is enough time, 30 seconds, for Virginia to change her mind, to maybe think, oh, maybe I shouldn't murder my mom right now. However, Virginia, she does not change her mind. So this is when she retrieves the knife that she purchased a few months ago for the murder. She raises the knife in the air and she proceeded to stab her mom over and over again. She stabbed her mom in the neck, in the shoulder, in the chest. She stabbed her mom a total number of eight times. But Lois was still alive. She was actually now fighting for her life, trying to defend herself. So this is when Virginia picked up the hammer once again and started striking her mom with so much rage with this hammer over and over again. She was barely clinging to life. And then Virginia started to kiss her mom's hand, saying sorry, saying that she wished that it hadn't happened like this. And Virginia carried on holding her mom's hand until her mom passed away. And I truly have no words. The attack, especially on her mom, was so cold, it was so brutal. It was filled with so much rage. Now, after the murders, Virginia came to the sudden realization that she has just murdered her parents. And then a few hours later, Virginia takes a wander into town where she purchases items that she is going to use to conceal her parents' bodies. She then went to B&Q where she ordered 40 breeze blocks, cement, sand, a stepladder. Then after returning home from town, she phones up her parents' bank and she orders a new credit card. And then on the very, very same day, she does a little bit of online shopping with her parents' credit card. She buys herself some new jewelry and some new clothes. And I'm like, are you being serious? And then this next part is just so, so chilling. Later on the evening of the day of the murder, Virginia sends a text message to her sister pretending to be their mom, Lois. And the message said, quote, Dad and I are at the seaside this week. We'll catch up with you soon. 
mum kiss. And that is just so chilling that on the very same evening that she has murdered their parents, Virginia is already pretending to be her parents, messaging her sister. So then two days pass by and Virginia has obviously lived in the home for those two days with her parents' dead bodies just there in their beds. So what was Virginia planning to do? with the bodies of her dead parents. Was she planning to dispose of those bodies in any way? Move them? Bury them somewhere? No. Virginia was planning on keeping her parents' bodies in the house. Virginia was planning on building a homemade tomb slash mausoleum for her parents. So she was essentially going to bury her parents inside of the home. And then she would essentially live alongside the bodies of her parents that she has murdered. And this is where this case just really starts to get so crazy right now. It's just truly insane. Because the first thing that Virginia does is she places both of her parents' bodies in the sleeping bags that she has purchased. She then drags her father's body into his study where she places his body in the corner of the room. She then wraps the sleeping bag in 11 rolls of plastic. She then took the large breeze blocks that she has ordered and then one by one she starts stacking these huge blocks on top of one another and she essentially builds a tomb in the corner of this study. She then uses the cement to lock everything in place and then she just leaves her dad's body there. She has just literally built a tomb in this study. And now that is where her dad's body stays for the rest of this case. And as for her mom's body, she takes even less care. She drags her mom's body that is in a sleeping bag into a wardrobe in an upstairs bedroom. She then seals up the wardrobe with Gorilla Tape. And then she places the breeze blocks in front of the wardrobe, sealing her mom's body in the wardrobe. And throughout this case, there has been quite a stark difference between the way Virginia has treated her dad to her mom. The attack on her mom was filled with a lot more anger. It was a lot more aggressive. And the fact that she stabbed her mom multiple times, she hit her with the hammer multiple times. And even the way she has dealt with the bodies. With her dad, she has essentially built a tomb. Whereas with her mom, she's just shoved her mom in the wardrobe. And then what is just so crazy about this case, after everything, Virginia just goes back to her normal life. She would leave her house. She would go into town. She would go shopping. She would speak to neighbors. And then afterwards, she would return home. She slept in the same house as her parents' bodies. She would eat her meals in the same house as her parents' bodies. She would relax and enjoy herself, watch TV. I don't know how she could do that. How can she just return? to normal life after what she has done. Virginia carries on receiving the money from both of her parents' pensions, which added up to thousands of pounds every single month. She also frequently opened new credit cards in her parents' names, and obviously she would max out those credit cards, as well as continuing to raid both of their bank accounts and stealing their money that they had in those accounts, taking their winter fuel allowances. It was just all about money. Pure and simple, this whole case, the whole motivation, it comes down to money. And unbelievably, this went on for months. And no one seemed to notice. No one seemed to notice that John and Lois were no longer alive. But then after a few months, neighbours started to question things. They started to notice that there was a bit of strange activity going on in the house. For starters, the curtains were always closed. They were never open. Virginia was also acting weird as well. She would be rushing in and out of the house. So neighbors started to ask Virginia, where are your parents? Are they okay? I haven't seen them in a while. And Virginia would just say, oh yes, 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 yes. Nothing's wrong, everything's okay. Virginia started to tell the neighbors a load of lies about where her parents were. The first story was that her parents had gone traveling and then the next story was that her parents are just a little unwell, so they're just in the house relaxing and recovering. It was just always a different story. And fooling friends, neighbors is one thing, but we have to remember that Virginia has four other sisters. So there are four other children of Lois and John. Surely they are going to notice that their parents 
are missing. How was Virginia going to fool her sisters into thinking that their parents were away or ill? Surely there's no way Virginia is going to be able to get away with these murders when it comes to her other siblings. Like surely they're going to find out. However, Virginia does. It is truly unbelievable because as the months pass, Virginia messages all of her siblings pretending to be their parents. She would say things like, hi, how are you? How's everything going? She would try to start conversations with her siblings pretending to be her parents. And Virginia, pretending to be her parents, would come up with a load of lies and excuses as to why the other sisters needed to stay away from the house. One minute the parents were ill, so they didn't want to pass on their illness to their daughters. The next minute they were away, so the daughters couldn't visit. Or they were just too busy, or the house was a mess. And unbelievably, Virginia's sisters believed these messages. They believed that these messages were from their parents, which meant that none of the sisters visited their parents. In fact, and this is just truly mind boggling, there was even one time when Virginia herself called up one of her sisters pretending to be their mom. And the sister on the other end of the phone, she really did believe that she was talking to her mom. How? How, how, how? And it really does just blow my mind that not one of the sisters realized that they weren't messaging with their parents or they weren't talking to their parents. And this is just so sick on Virginia's part because she has just murdered their parents and now she's pretending to be them, toying with her sister's emotions. And it's really easy and obvious to think well, why didn't the sisters visit the parents? Why didn't they bang down the door? Why didn't they demand to go in? Why did they just agree not to go to the house? Who goes so long without seeing their parents? And again, I just want to stress, because we don't know the situation and the dynamic of the family, we have to remember that every single parent and child relationship is different and individual. We can speculate, of course we can, but some children are estranged from their parents for various reasons. For reasons that are through no fault of the child. But then on the flip side, some parents have children that want nothing to do with them through no fault of the parents. We have to just keep in mind that you never know what happens behind closed doors and you never never truly know what relationships are like. The only thing we do know is Virginia has murdered her parents in cold blood. And that is Virginia and Virginia alone. And so Virginia continues to get away with this for months and months. 2019 turns into 2020 and still no one comes looking for her parents. And then unbelievably, an incredibly good stroke of luck for Virginia. What happened in 2020? The COVID pandemic began. And obviously the whole world went into lockdown. And it is just so crazy that this unprecedented event of a global pandemic happened just as Virginia was trying to hide the murders of her parents. Because two whole years pass and with the COVID pandemic and the restrictions and everything, no one really paid attention to Virginia or the fact that her parents were never seen. But even after the pandemic was over, Virginia still continued to get away with the murders. Virginia kept up the fraud with her sisters. She continued on to text them various different times pretending to be her parents. She also deceived her sisters by sending them birthday cards and Christmas cards. Virginia would also call up her local doctors pretending to be her parents to make various different appointments for their conditions. She would always cancel the appointments a few days later, but she was just doing all of these things to throw people off the scent that her parents were dead. And this next part, I truly cannot believe, but Virginia would phone up the police pretending to be her mom, Lois, putting in complaints about the neighbors being too loud or being a nuisance or littering outside of her home. And I'm like, what? And I just don't understand, I really don't because she has murdered her parents. Why is she contacting the police over trivial things? Why is she phoning the police pretending to be Lois? And between July of 2020 and September of 2023, Virginia called the police a total number of 200 
and 38 times. Yep, 238 separate times. For somebody that has murdered her parents and hidden their bodies in her home, this is very, very strange behavior. People have speculated that it was almost like she wanted to be caught. She wanted to get the attention of the police to hope that they came over to the house and find the bodies, but who knows? But this is when Virginia's behavior starts to get even stranger because now Virginia would spend hours standing outside the front of the home, sweeping. She would just pretend to sweep the ground and she would literally just be sweeping up six to seven leaves for hours. Again, people have speculated that Virginia was doing this because she couldn't stand being in the house with her parents. Virginia also started to try and become friends with as many people as she could, particularly in her local town. So she tried to become friends with the local greengrocer, with the butcher, with the florist, literally anyone that worked in her local town. And Virginia, she was just the kind of person that she did not shut up. Like if you got into a conversation with her, you would be stuck there. She just does not stop talking. But what was the most strange is that she would always talk about her parents. Always. That was her favorite topic of conversation. She would talk about the fact that her parents had moved to the seaside for their retirement. But then there were a few times where she would say bizarre things like, the police are after me. They think I've killed my parents. And she would say these bizarre things to shopkeepers. And because she had kind of gained a reputation for being a little bit eccentric, a little bit strange, people didn't really pay too much attention to what she said. And then she really did start to buy friends, including her neighbors. She would shower her neighbors, strangers, anyone with gifts. She would buy neighbors plants and flowers and alcohol. She would buy them like DIY equipment. Her neighbor, the neighbor that lives next door to her, the one that has the same adjoining wall. There was one time where she bought him a load of Chinese takeout food. There was another time where she just left donuts on his doorstep. And again, people have speculated, was she buying friends? Like, is she lonely? And that is what she's trying to do. Or is she trying to buy people's silence? Did a few of the neighbors become suspicious? It's just crazy to think about, especially her neighbor that has the adjoining wall to her. It's crazy to think about the fact that he was living next door to Virginia for four years. And he had no idea that he was living next door to a woman who had murdered her parents and her parents' bodies are still in the home. And then the next thing Virginia did, which was clearly for attention. She faked another pregnancy. She bought a fake baby bump off the internet. She bought a load of maternity clothes and she would wear her fake baby bump whenever she would go out into the neighborhood and every single person that she would pass, she would tell them, oh, look at me, I'm pregnant. And then she would get out fake scan pictures. The whole time as well, Virginia is still constantly phoning up her local doctor's office to make appointments, pretending to be her mom. And then a few days later, canceling them. And it really is just bizarre how much attention Virginia is drawing to herself. She is not acting like someone that has murdered her parents and wants to get away with it. So at this point, we get to August of 2023. It is now over four years since she murdered her parents. Four years, Virginia has just been living in that house with the bodies of her dead parents. And at this point, Virginia has become a paranoid mess. She goes around telling people that her ring doorbell has been hacked, that her Wi-Fi has been hacked and people are spying on her. And this is also when her habit of calling the police for no reason goes into overdrive. She would call them up nearly every single day with some sort of problem. Unbelievably, there was one time when Virginia phoned the police and claimed that she was attacked in her back garden by three intruders. She even created fake scratch marks on her face. And of course, the police took these accusations seriously. So the police came out to her home. The police went into that house to interview her about this fake attack that didn't even happen. And the police, they come into the home, they sit on the sofa, and they are not too far away from the study, which obviously in the study is that tomb, and her dad's body is in there. But of course, the police are not there suspecting her of murder or anything like that. So they didn't realize a single thing. They make their little report on the intruders, and then they leave. Again, I'm like, what is going on in her mind? Does she want to get caught? Or is she just so 
emboldened by the fact that she has been getting away with it for so long. But was Virginia going to get away with the murders of her parents for much longer? No, she wasn't. Because finally, everything was about to come crashing down around Virginia. And this all started in September of 2023. The local GP had started to become worried about John and Lois because they had not visited the doctors in over four years. And they both had ongoing health issues where they needed to visit the doctors. John and Lois were also displaying very bizarre behavior. I mean, both of them were constantly making doctor's appointments, but then canceling a few days later. So on the 1st of September, 2023, a receptionist at the doctor's office raised a safeguarding issue and they sent it over to the police. So the police start looking into this straight away and they call up Virginia Virginia, but Virginia tries to throw them off the scent as best as she can. She said that her parents were traveling and they hadn't taken their mobile phones with them, so there was no way to contact them, which I'm sorry, that's suspicious. And that's exactly what the police thought. So just over one week later, on the 15th of September, 2023, this is when the police decide enough is enough. They still hadn't had any contact from John or Lois. They were still technically missing people at this point. The police obtained a warrant and they made their way over to the home to go and search it. And if you thought this case was strange enough already, it is about to get so much more bizarre. There is no other word that I can use to describe what happens next. Because the police turn up to the home, they are ready to arrest Virginia possibly. And this whole thing has been caught on body cam footage from the police. And the whole video is out there on the internet and you should just go and watch it because your jaw will be on the ground. <laughs> No one in here at the moment. Hold on. The police. Got it. So the police, they break down the door and they find Virginia just standing there. A police officer holds up a taser and tells Virginia to stay where she is. Stay where you are! Right. Show me stay where you are, show your hands. Yeah. Do you need Yep. Do you need Oh. The time is 12 12. You're under arrest and suspicion of murder against Jonathan McCulloch and Elias McCulloch. Yeah. Okay? She doesn't say anything, but in my home defense, you're going to mention or question, so it's like she doesn't want anything to do with the business. Okay? And what is just so shocking is how calm Virginia is. She just seems so calm and relaxed. And it's like, who the hell is calm and relaxed when they are being arrested? She shows no emotion. Like her face just doesn't change at all. And she says to the police officers, I'll cooperate. I'll cooperate. Right, your rest is I'll necessary I'll for a punch in the face. The police ask Virginia if there is anything in the property that they should know about. And Virginia just very calmly responds, Yes, there is. Can I take you to it? Is there anything in the property we should know about? Yes, there is. Can I take you to it? No, you can tell me. And the police officer is like, oh, no, no, no. You are staying right there. You can just tell us. So then Virginia gestures to the next room and says, well, can we go in there? Because there is something in there that I need to tell you about. Uh, can we go in there for a second, just so I can tell you something? What's in there? Yeah, yeah. I said, I need to tell you something about what's upstairs on the top floor as well. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. So they walk to the back of the house and Virginia points to the corner where there is a concrete structure. You can't see this on the camera, but you can see the police officers looking in the direction of the structure. And this is when Virginia, again, so calmly just says, my dad's body is in there. Oh, uh, my dad's body is in there. Right, okay. Okay. Yep, okay. Um... And the officers are shocked. They are trying to keep their composure. And one officer just replies, so what about your mom? Obviously, I'll What about say, your mom? Um, a little bit more complicated. Okay. Um, can I, that's why I said, can I go upstairs and show right, you? Can you explain it to us, please? Because we're trying to preserve this. It's now going to be seen. So we need to preserve this the best we can. So I don't want you to have you walking up there. All right. Because it's, it's that, that's for your well being as well as ours. Oh, no, up, up, up. Okay. Up. So what, Thank where, you. where, where will we find your mum? Well, where will we find um, your mum? Virginia, again, she is just acting so bizarre. And then it's just like word vomit. She just very calmly tells the officers, 
everything. Okay, so upstairs there are about five wardrobes. Yep. Um, it's behind the bed, but back next to the sink. That's the second one. Um, I've slipped a pile of those into his drink. Um, there were about two or three drinks that I brought downstairs. Um, um, yeah, they were basically... Uh, he he didn't drink all of them. He only drank probably about half of two. But, um, yeah, when I went in in the morning, this was before my mother, uh, when I went in the morning, early hours, I got up about half an hour early, about um, six o'clock mm -hmm. in the morning. I uh, came in and he was gone. He was well, gone. It was, um, I did know that this would kind of come eventually. Um it's proper that I serve my punishment. So, yeah. And the tone that she is saying everything in is so creepy. At one point as well, she sneezes and he's like, oh, excuse me, bless me. Do your rest. Um, <laughs> purpose of your rest. And I don't know why, but that just wound me up the wrong way. Cause it's like, shut up. And then something that really stuck out to me in this whole arrest video is that the police officer has obviously written down all of the details that Virginia has told them. And he's reading these details back to Virginia so she can sign off on it. Okay, so Virginia, I'm just gonna ask you this. This is what I've written down based on the information you just told us because what we regard as a significant comment because yeah, you've made well, it up on, under caution up after your arrest. By the way, part of, that's, they're my granddad's. Okay, right. So I've written this, please. Um, I, Virginia McCulloch, have, inf have informed Police Constables 77329 Brown and 79387 Bowers after entering my house on Friday the 15th of September 2023 that I murdered my father, John McCulloch, who was st stated was under a bed in the rear ground floor of the house and my mother upstairs in a cupboard next to the sink. Wardrobe, so, wardrobe, it's a double wardrobe. Right. And Virginia, again, so calm and so creepy, she interjects and says, oh, no, 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 it's actually a wardrobe, not a cupboard. It's a wardrobe. My mom's body is in a wardrobe. Wardrobe, so, wardrobe, it's a double wardrobe. Right, okay, I've written double cupboard. Wardrobe. It's like four wardrobes, but it's the one nearest the sink. Double order. And I'm like, oh my God, is that really important? And then after she has signed off on her confession statement, this is when she turns to one of the officers and says in quite a happy tone, cheer up, at least you've caught the bad guy. Cheer up, at least you've caught the bad guy. I've just I know woken I don't up see today and done my job. Exactly. No. I know I don't it's see not a lie. Evil, but we all, um, yeah, not I'm not going to comment on anything. It's not my job to comment on it, no. okay, because I've got to be impartial with everything, no. okay, so I'm not going to give any comments. No, no, well, I mean, I deserve to obviously uh, get whatever's coming sentence wise because that's the right thing um, to do. And that might give me a bit of peace. And I'm like, are you being serious right now? You are so calmly telling the police that you have murdered your parents in cold blood and you're trying to act like the nice guy. It's almost like she wants the police to like her. She has that sickly sweetness about her. Oh my God, it makes my skin crawl. And then as the police are taking Virginia out of the home, this is when she adds one last comment. She says, oh, in that handbag, there's a bank card that you probably need to know about. Um, also in the handbag as well, there's... Um... It, and again, because you're probably going to need to know about it, there's a card in there, um, mm -hmm. card one money, um, and um, that's a bank card where um, there's um, a lot of transactions that have taken place over the last few years what? Uh, from money that pertains to my parents. And then following this, the police lead Virginia away. And this is when the police make the shocking discoveries of finding the bodies of both John and Lois. And remember, this is over four years now since they have been murdered. Their bodies have been decomposing for a very long time. They are not in a good state at all. And when they uncovered the bodies, sadly, there was not much left of their remains. They were in such a bad state of decomposition that they had to be identified by dental records alone. Following this, Virginia is formally charged with the murder of her parents. The police carry out an extensive investigation. And when Virginia is in custody, 
she still does not shut up. There are more clips of her in a prison cell and she just does not stop talking ever. So, um, murder weapon is upstairs in the room and um, uh, kitchen. Um, um, it's in the middle of the brown carpet, um, against the wall, opposite the shelves, so there are two long white shelves, so opposite um, where that wall is, that's where uh, the knife is. And then there is another clip where she pretends to get all emotional. She's there like dabbing her eyes with no tears coming out. Her voice stays the same. It doesn't crack or anything. She is emotionless. So um, next bit is very hard to talk about. That's probably the most grisly detail. Um, so on the um, ground floor underneath the stairs, um, there's a few like storage boxes and things. Um, and uh, in the middle, um, I think it's in one of the boxes or in a bag or something, um, there, um, um, yeah. if you want me to shush after this, it's fine, um, but every bit helps. You'll, you will find forensic it's helpful, there's a hammer. Uh, I know, I know. I know, but I'm, I'm trying to help so you find everything. It's in the middle underneath the stairs. It will still have blood on it. It's rusted, but it will still have blood traces on it. So not cooperating mm -hmm. is okay. it's futile. Yeah. There's no point in not cooperating, really, is it? And then after her arrest, this is when Virginia's four other siblings found out the truth of what happened to their parents. And the whole family were devastated. Not just the siblings, but the wider extended family as well. And there were various statements put out by the sisters. One sister said that they were not given the opportunity to even say goodbye to their parents. Another sister said that they were sick to their core over what Virginia had done. She said, how dare Virginia rob our family of this right? We are orphans due to her abhorrent and heinous actions for which she is solely responsible. So then after this, Virginia's criminal proceedings began. However, she never made it to trial because she pleaded guilty. And then on Friday, the 11th of October, 2024, so literally only last week, this is when Virginia showed up in court to be sentenced. And because there was no trial, there are a lot of things in this case that go unanswered. But I think it's very clear that the motivations behind the murder for Virginia was money motivated because Virginia stole approximately 160 thousand pounds from her parents in total. The judge at the sentencing trial also found that at the time of the offence, Virginia was displaying signs of a personality disorder. She was also suffering from mild depression. And then since the murder, Virginia was also displaying some signs of psychosis. And the judge did take these mental health conditions as mitigating factors. But then when it came to sentencing Virginia, she was sentenced to life in prison and she has to serve a minimum of 36 years in prison. And then after the trial, the four sisters did put out a joint statement saying how amazing their parents were. John McCulloch was described as a caring and hardworking man. He had a passion for teaching and writing and loved his job as a university lecturer. He was taken too soon and cruelly at the hands of his own daughter. He was 70 years old. Lois McCulloch was described as a kind, caring and thoughtful woman. She delighted in her grandchildren, loved taking trips to the seaside with her husband, and had a passion for history and the royal family. She was taken too soon from her family. She was 71 years old. And the joint statement that the sisters put out said, quote, our family has been left devastated and heartbroken at the deaths of our parents, who were taken from us so cruelly. As we try to move forward with our lives, we will remember the happy times we enjoyed with them. And there are a lot of unanswered questions in this case, and who knows what information could come out in the future. But as always, let me know your thoughts, theories, and opinions on today's case. And I'm sure you probably have a lot because like I said in the intro of this case, the case of Virginia has been everywhere on the news. I feel like everyone is talking about it. Everyone has an opinion on it. So let me know your thoughts, theories, and opinions in the comments down below. And don't forget to leave me your case suggestions in the comments down below because I always wanna know what you wanna hear next. Thank you again to Midas Merch for sponsoring today's video. Don't forget you can download the game for free using my link in the description box. And that is everything from me. So I'll see you in my next video. Bye.